let's talk about whitelisting solutions. And before we do that, I have two things to get out of the way. The first thing is, if at any time in the past you have suggested that I should look at a whitelisting application, everything I'm going to say in this video, even though I'll only be looking at a couple of products, is going to apply across the board to any standard whitelisting based security product. The second thing is that if you're an advanced user and you use any of the utilities I'm going to talk about for very specific purposes, I have absolutely nothing against that. But if you're considering getting a whitelisting solution to replace your AV product or maybe to help your AV product, then you should definitely stay tuned and hear what I have to say. Today we'll take a look at two solutions, one Secure A Plus and one is Voodoo Shield. The reason I picked these up is because they're relatively well put together products. They have a decent UI and function well and have different features accessible to all kinds of users. Also, they both advertise that they can replace anti-malware protection and that they're next gen and they emphasize that they can far outweigh the effectiveness of traditional AV solutions. Coming back to our system where we have Secure A+, I'm going to show you a pop-up which just randomly came up while I was using the system. Microsoft Update Task.dll, untrusted file, not signed, universal AV unknown. The file is blocked. Do you want to unblock it? And this is pretty much the exact same alert I get when I execute actual malware on the system, which I'll also show you by the way. And I want you to tell me how on earth would this information help you determine whether or not this was a legitimate DLL file? It could very well be malware, right? I mean, a lot of malware is called Windows Update Task. It's not a big deal to rename a DLL file. And it's not signed, so that's probably a sign that it's malware. Maybe we should block it. But wait, this is actually part of the Windows install. I haven't visited any website on this computer. This is just what it picks up on a default Windows system. So perfectly legitimate file that's not only widely used, that comes built in with Windows, is being picked up by the application whitelisting leaving the user to essentially make a random decision. Now let's say I clicked on continue blocking. There you go. Now we have another wonderful file that's detected, appcore.windows.dll. What do I want to do with this? Continue blocking this one too? And eventually you get to a point where the AV actually starts preventing you from doing your tasks. And I really want to address the part of the audience that thinks that users can make an informed decision about any file that's executed. So you can just look at this information and decide whether or not the file is malicious. Let's see, let's look at the information. Untrusted file, that's what it says. Not me, the program. Appcore.windows.dll. I mean, it seems like a malware name, right? Not signed. Just be honest with yourself. What would you do in this situation? If I was running a malware test right now, what would you expect me to do? If I clicked unblock and trust, would that be okay? Of course not. You'd complain. You'd say, what the hell, Leo? You just allowed the malware program. How can you blame the security product for doing that? It literally told you the file was untrusted. You should have blocked it. Yet, in this case, I have to unblock and trust. And I want you to remember this when we will actually be doing the malware test. This is the first file that comes up, malware100.exe. How is this alert different from the one we got with legitimate Windows applications? It isn't. It says the same thing, untrusted file, not signed, and do you want to block it or do you want to unblock it? These are really old samples, by the way, so any AV would probably block all of them. These are the same samples I used in my last video with Have Secure, which you should watch for a comparison, by the way. Now, remember what I asked you a few minutes earlier. If I clicked unblock and trust, would that be okay? And now we get the second file and we have a similar alert, except it says the detection ratio is one out of 11, which again, doesn't really say much. There are a lot of false positives, but I'm just going to be a good boy and continue blocking. And again, we get another one of these same alerts that says not signed, unknown, decide what you want to do. How is this different from UAC? The program is not helping me in any way decide whether a file is malware or not, which in my opinion is the whole point of having a security application because users are not capable of making that decision. If in the end everything just depends on what I click over here, then how much of it is the credit of the product and how much of it is just my credit for reading the file name and deciding? 
So this whole thing is kind of pointless. Maybe I should just click remember my answer for the entire process and click on continue blocking or unblock and trust which would effectively give us a completely different result. So if I click on this, it would miss everything. We'd have a proactive detection of 0%. And if I click on this, we'd have a proactive detection of 100%. Now, since I really like malware getting destroyed, I'm going to click on this and I'll show you what happens. And to no surprise, the proactive detection is 100% and all of the malware was successfully blocked, should I say? But if we look at the malware removal rate, that is the actual number of malware it detected and removed because it decided that they were malicious regardless of what I thought, it's only 14.3%. Which one of these rates is a better description of what the product did and which one of these rates is a better description of what I decided it should be? Because if I had clicked the other option and told it to remember that, this first number could have been very different. And you might say, well, at least it blocked the malware. At least you have an option to block the malware. Isn't that better than an AV company missing malware? Isn't a false positive better than a false negative? And I think that's a very important question. So here's the thing. Almost any malware analyst could write a signature in less than 20 seconds that would detect all executable files. And I think if any of you are malware analysts, regardless of what company you're working for, you can attest to this fact. Also, a malware analyst could write a signature that would just flag all unsigned files or files lacking a digital signature, again, in under 20 seconds. A malware analyst could also write a signature that would flag all files that are executable, don't have a digital signature, and match a few other properties that are indicative of some types of malware. Also, in under maybe one minute. So why don't they just do it? The answer is because a false positive is much worse than a false negative. Why is that? Isn't it worse if a malware gets executed and your system is infected? Actually, no. If you miss a certain malware file, the user is still left to the mercy of the malware. So if the malware does something really bad, that's uh, going to be nasty. But the malware could also do something relatively harmless, like just add a browser extension. There are all sorts of things that could happen at that point, and all of it would depend on what the malware does and not what the AV does. But say a false positive causes a crash that makes you lose precious work, that's not only the AV failing to do its job and letting a malware through that may or may not do some damage, here the AV is directly causing damage to you. So generally, the way things operate, false positive is much worse than a false negative. And if you want it to operate the other way around, it would be very easy for any AV in the world to detect all the malware out there. But that wouldn't be much because you are not detecting anything. That's just like UAC. UAC technically blocks all the malware in the world. But because it also blocks every legitimate program, you always click allow. So it essentially just becomes another headache or another step before executing an application rather than a security measure. So now let's take a look at our second whitelisting application, which is Fudu Shield, and let's see what happens as we try to install it. And there you go. Again, untrusted file, install VoodooShield.exe. Although this one is signed and it does tell us that it's clean, but it still says untrusted file, which is interesting. I'm going to unblock and trust because I actually want to install it. The nice thing about them is at least it seems they have made it clear over here that Voodoo Shield is the user-friendly computer lock and it has this autopilot mode, which is supposed to toggle on or off depending on what you're executing. Now I like this approach a little bit better because the autopilot is, I guess, using some kind of algorithm to make that determination. But let's see what happens with a few tests. So Voodoo Shield seems to be doing a good job blocking the malware so far, even though it's taking a while to analyze. But here's the interesting thing. It's convinced that Process Hacker is a threat. It has five detections in virus total two, apparently. Let's look at the actual alert. Users, processhacker.exe, Voodoo AI. Now this is the part I love. Unsafe, 100. So the AI that they're using is absolutely sure that this file is unsafe. And you have different options. You can block, you can quarantine, you can sandbox, you can allow false positive. So I'm going to go with quarantine, which seems to be the recommended option. And I can't use Process Hacker anymore. Too bad, I guess. <laughs> I think you guys get the point, right? Or the lack of a point thereof. This is why I don't like whitelisting applications. In general, they just make life more difficult. 
and add no value whatsoever to the user. I guess the argument is if you're having somebody who's relatively inexperienced, they're better off running Voodoo Shield. Wrong. They are going to end up having way more issues than they would have with any malware. People will tell me and say, oh, my AV is blocking stuff. I don't know what malware is on my computer, but nothing is opening. And they're talking about literally a whitelisting program which is itself flagging other files, giving them the impression that there are threats on their system when there aren't. And the so-called threats were the programs they were trying to run and were blocked by the whitelisting application. Now, I want you to remember that it would be very easy for an anti-malware application to just implement a signature that would do a lot of similar stuff, that would detect a lot of such files and flag them, and then you could decide whether to allow it or not. But as it turns out, that is a relatively fruitless pursuit, and it's not a very good technique for blocking malware. I know there's still people out there who can think of a use case for these applications, but I honestly can't. Because as I mentioned, the less experienced the user, the more damaging applications like this can be. And if you are an experienced user, the last thing you want is another pop-up telling you, do you really want to run Process Hacker? That's my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the PC Security channel. This is Leo. Thank you for watching, and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.